All right, so let's just go through this together. Uh, the, I, the scores for IQ tests are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. Uh, Cynthia gives an IQ test to all her 200 IB diploma students in the school. Her results are shown here in the table. So these are the results. Cynthia wants to test whether those results are normally distributed and performs a chi square fitness to fit test at a 10% significance level. Write down her null an alternative hypothesis. Have we got writing them down as well? So we should have the null hypothesis, the data is normally distributed. The alternative hypothesis, the data is not normally distributed. Oh, thanks. Find the expected values. Well, how can we find the expected values? So we say that f, we say that x is normally distributed. What are the parameters for the normal distribution? What are the parameters for the normal distribution? But sir, this um okay, this oh, mean and the standard deviation squared. Yeah. So what's the mean? Uh, hundred and that squared. The population. So we've got that the population mean is a hundred. And the variance is the standard deviation squared. The standard deviation is 10. So the variance is 10 squared. So the reason I was hesitant on it because I, I thought that, that it was trying to separate the IB students down here from the general population up there. No, so we're taking the entire population. So the entire population is all of our students, all of our IB. So the population we're talking about here are per 200 IB students. This isn't a sample, it's the entire population. So we can test the normal distribution this way. Yeah, that's why so I'm hesitant on my answer. Then you need to find the probability. So each of the expected values, so the expected value of, um, let's te just do this one, the expected value that x is less than 90 should be equal to the probability that x is less than 90 multiplied by the total population, which is n, which is 200. So if we just try that one on our calculator, we will get menu, probability, distributions, normal distribution. Uh, we want this one, go from 0 up to 9, up to 90. We have a population mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 10. Take that value, multiply it by 200 students, 
and we should get 31.7, which is the value calculated here. So we can take this calculation here, change the bounds, And we can go from 90 up to 100. Multiply that by 200, and we get 68.3 to round that one up. Yeah, let me just pause the video a minute while we calculate all those values. Sure. Do that again. All right. <laughs> so the expected value that X is from 90 to 100. Let's find the expected value that x is between 100 and 110. Let's do this calculation. So to do the calculation, um, I can press menu, statistics, stat tests. No, sorry, menu, stat calculate. Not statistics. Okay. Probability distributions. Normal CDF. Normal CDF. My lower bound this time will be a hundred. My oh, upper yeah. bound will be a hundred and ten. My population mean will be a hundred. My standard deviation is ten. I take that value and I multiply by two hundred because there are two hundred students. And I get the value Okay, so let's make the other calculations. Wait, so how can how are ninety and and hundred and because it's a, a, um, if you look where the mean is, the population mean is at a hundred. So if you think about the shape of the curve, the shape of the curve is symmetrical. So if the mean is at the 100 and the standard deviation is 10, if you're going 10 either side of the thing, you're going to get the same percentage, theoretically. So there should be a lot of symmetry in the values. So here we get 27. Point two, four point two eight, So we have our expected values in each one of these. 
these are the values that we should have got. Now, one of the problems here is you can never have an expected value in one of your community price price work tests, which is less than five. This is very important to remember for your IAs. Um, so let's put this one. Expected values must be greater than five. Expected values must be greater than five. Remember this. So if you see here, these two values are too low. So what we have to do is you have to compress the rows. So instead of having going up in tens, here we go up in ten, here we go up in ten, we have to put these all together. So we get this new boundary here. So then we would do, then we would do so basically, um, we add these three values together. 120 on. Uh, 100, kind of like 110 on us. 110 and above. If we add 120 on us, we're still going to be less than 5. It's going to be uh, just a bit short 5. Oh, yeah, sorry. It has to be more than 5. So it's better to compress the table, reducing the degrees of freedom. And then we're going to get 31.7. 68.3, 68.3, and 31.7. You should remember these values, 68.3. That's because I'm timesing by 200. If I do the head times by 100, you see it as being this 34.1, which is the percentage, which is within one standard deviation of the mean, one of the standard values for the normal distribution. So these are expected values. What we need to do now is write down the number of degrees of freedom. So our degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1. Now we're down to only four rows. So the degrees of freedom is going to be 3. And then we have to find our and perform our chi-square test. So we've already written our null and alternate hypothesis. We found our expected values. So it's simply about conducting the test. So we will add a page, we'll add a list. We can't use E and F on this one. So because I've still got them stored here and we'll pull up these two values. Oh okay I'm just gonna replace mine. Yeah. So you can just replace them um, or you can give them a different name. So this one I'm going to call score. These are our scores. Oops, I'm having difficulty with this one. That's his score. Enter. And here we have our expected score. Type in our values. So, do we have some observed values for this one? Yeah, here. So, we have our observed values, which was 5, 14, 74, and then we have to add these three together. We have to add these three together. So, let's add those up 58 plus 34 plus 15. Plus 15. We got 107. Let's just verify that we've not made a mistake. So we'll add all the values. It should be 200. There we go. 107. So we'll type those in 5, 14, 74, 107. We're expecting 31.7, 68.3. 
So we've entered in our data in our table. We need to find the p-value now. So we press menu, statistics, stat tests, chi-square fitness of fit. Our observed list is our score. Our expected list is our expected. Our degrees of freedom is three. So in this case, I'm not going to use the chi square only the piece statistic to complete the test. Why should you get the Because we have four rows. There's, there are four elements in our list, and it's always n minus one, but so one less than the number of elements in the list. So we can find that the p value now. You can see that the p-value is 7.89. p-value equals 7.89. We can always compare the numbers on an inequality. So the p-value is... Oh, no, it's not. Look. What have I missed? Is it 7.89? It's... Yeah. Times 10 to the power of negative... Oh, times... Oh. It's minuscule. It's minuscule. It's tiny. It's 7.89. So it's not evenly distributed. Times 10 to the minus 53. Don't miss those little e's. I've seen you do that in the test quite a bit on the calculator. We miss those. So don't miss that. 7.89 times 10 to the minus 53. So that clearly is less than the significance level. It's less than the significance level was 10%. So 0 0.10. The significance level is 10%. This is greatly less than this. One. So the significance level was how uh, like the chance that our results are even though we think they're accurate, they're just straight up not correct. Yeah. This implies that the p-value is less than the significance level. So if the p-value is less than significance, there's sufficient evidence to reject. That means we have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternate hypothesis. The data is not normally distributed. So this implies the data is not normally distributed. Okay. Have a go at exercise 8A. Eight. Eight. 